Now, this brings up the next thing, which is going backwards now uh, from Section 960, which is the foreign tax credit. We go back to 959, uh, which is a section dealing with, you know, how do you make, in a sense, the accounting work? Okay, what does that mean? Here in this example, X has recognized currently 100 of subpart F income, 100 of guilty. It's also, of course, accounted for the foreign tax credit and the Section 78 gross up. But just looking at Y and the E and P situation, it has already accounted for and treated as income at the X level this 200 from subpart F and guilty. Has X received the cash yet? Let's assume the cash is still sitting down there. How does the cash get back up to, assuming there is any cash, you know, they might have reinvested it in more inventory, so it's, uh, or fixed assets, so it, it doesn't mean that there's necessarily actual cash, but if there were cash within Y, how would the cash get to X? What would Y have to do? Declare a dividend. Y would have to declare a dividend. There's 100, 100 and other E and P of, of 100. When Y pays a dividend, how do we know what's been paid up? Do we know, what, you know, do we know what, whether it's paid out of subpart F income, guilty, or other E and P? And does it matter? Well, it does matter because uh, depending on what's paid up, uh, there may be, again, more foreign tax credit issues. Uh, when Y pays a dividend to X, is it possible that country B imposes a dividend withholding tax? Yeah, it is possible. So if the dividend withholding tax, if there's a dividend withholding tax and we pay out of other E and P, there's certainly no chance for a foreign tax credit because if the income's not recognized because of the participation exemption, then any dividend withholding tax will just be lost and not provide any benefit. On the other hand, with subpart F and guilty, then a dividend withholding tax is relevant to income which is actually recognized within the U.S. tax return for X and the foreign tax credit benefit makes some sense. So the rules contemplate this kind of stuff and they give ordering rules and they create accounts that allow you to track it. So there would be what's called uh, generally a a uh, PTI account, previously taxed income, previously taxed income, an account, and that account would be increased by that 100 and 100 that was recognized up at the X level. Uh, as a result uh, of, of certain ordering rules that are within uh, 959, when a dividend is actually paid, it will be considered to come first out of the PTI account. And only after that PTI account is exhausted, you know, falls to zero, would it come out of other earnings and profits. Now, when a dividend is actually paid and to the extent that it comes out of previously taxed income, well, gee, it's been previously taxed, 
So it is specifically under 959 not treated as dividend income at the X level. This sort of, as I was saying before, gets the accounting right. X has recognized taxable income but has not yet received the cash. Okay, when it does receive the cash, since it's already received the taxable income, it does not have income a second time. There's no double counting. So again, there's some logic behind these things. You know, it, it may sound like a, a morass, but again, you get into it a, a little bit in your work and uh, or through uh, your study, and it will uh, it will both make sense and uh, and uh, again be logical. You promise. I promise. <laughs> Stake my life on it. Okay, and then while we're on the subject of you know, getting the accounting right. Uh, if we go to section 961, uh, which fortunately is up there now, uh, we uh, see that there are rules regarding what is the basis for gain or loss of X's investment account, you know, excess cost basis in the, uh, uh, in the CFC. So uh, again, there's rules which tell you that, well, gee, if you have income uh, from subpart F or guilty, okay, gee, you're going to increase the basis, the cost basis of X in Y. When you actually send the cash back up, that's going to reduce your basis. And that's important should you sell the, uh, the subsidiary and have to recognize gain or loss on the sale. How much is the gain or loss? You know, proceeds minus your basis.